everyone, this is Pig for Life, and today's people will review we'll be taking a look at the first figure from Transform Element. This is their TE01 Op Leader or OP Leader. Obviously, this is their version of a masterpiece Optimus Prime, um, one of the few that have come out. And um, I'll be doing a comparison of these um, probably in the next week or so. If I get enough likes, maybe I'll do that. If I get like a hundred likes, maybe I'll do a comparison between this guy, the Magic Square, and um, our uh, stand standard mp10 um, and then once mp44 comes out maybe i'll do a comparison of all four but anyways hit that like button so uh this is the box packaging review you can see it has nice artwork it might look a little dark here but that's because it the lighting and actually is really metallic and shiny so as you can see when i twist it just how nice that box looks nice piece of artwork nothing really much on this side on here you get a nice piece of a uh, nice shot of his uh, robot mode with some of his accessories. The top again, nice and metallic. Bottom doesn't really have much aside from some of the standard warnings. And the back, as you would expect, more product shots showing off um, his robot mode and his alt mode. All right. Out of the packaging, you get a few different things. Uh, you get this manual, which is again nicely done with the artwork. And the instructions themselves uh, leave a little bit, little to be desired, a little to be desired, a little, hmm, a little to be, little to be desired. But um, that's because this transformation is pretty complex. At least a couple times you do it. And I'm going to show you uh, a much better way than what they show you here. So stick with me, and hopefully you'll get through this much easier than with this. You also get a set of decals, which is nice. They actually give you some decals that you can put onto his left shoulder or wherever you want and they give you some extra so we'll put this off to the side the packaging is styrofoam as you can see and once you open up his little styrofoam coffin you get a little piece which is an adapter for his alt mode so he can use the uh, mp10 trailer so even if you do replace this guy, re replace mp10 with this guy on your shelf you're going to still need to hold on to that, that uh, trailer he does have his Energon Axe, which is really nicely done, nicely sculpted, um, very round, so I feel like this looks more anime-ish, but clearly well done. He does have his um, Ion Cannon, does have a little button on top, which is very oddly placed. I'm not sure why they thought that would be the best place to put it, but if you press it, he does get a really nice, well, you can barely see it because of my lighting, but it is a very bright orange. Um, uh, blaster and on the inside is molded so you actually can see those kind of ridges that um, that the blaster for Optimus Prime typically has. We'll show this off later. Uh, I'm actually not sure what the battery replacement is for that. I don't think they mentioned it in the instructions. You know to be safe I, I should check but um, right now I don't really know and I haven't opened it up. So sorry about that. I should have done a little bit more research. So yeah, let's actually get started with robot mode review. But just out of the packaging, he looks really nice. He looks more in style with the upcoming MP44 than the um, than the Magic Square or our um, our uh, MP10 looks. But just out of the packaging, you can see less details, more again like anime or or, or um, cartoon styled. Doing a quick 360. You can see very clean backpack and back overall. Overall, a very clean figure. Probably the cleanest that we've seen, I would say, in terms of all aspects. No, no translucent like yellow pieces here. He also has really nice detailing on the inside of, inside of his chest. So once you open this up, you actually see his matrix chamber, which is very accurate to the movie where we see it open up. And you do have a matrix in there, which is very hard to get out. I'm gonna see if I can get it out. There we go. It's my spudger. And I think it's die cast. Very hard. Nice translucent blue jewel in the center. But yeah, this is one of the, my favorite details about this figure. Just the chest that has a lot of nice paint in there. It looks really nice. This is the reason why I actually probably bought this figure. Uh, more so than anything else, because I love that chest detail. Alright, what else can I say about it? Um, He is really heavy. 
I was actually kind of shocked when I picked him up out of the packaging that he is much heavier than what we come to expect with um, the standard Takara line or Hasbro line and much heavier than the Magic Square one. But I'm not going to do too many comparisons because again, I'm going to shoot a separate comparison detail showcasing all three of those um, in a little bit more detail. Uh, what else can I say? He does have really nice silver paint. I wish it was chrome. Same thing with the ch uh, the the abdomen piece. I think that's die cast probably, but it's a silver paint instead of chromed. Same thing with things, the the tanks here. The only small things that really bother me about just his look are well, let's see. One, I, I wish they, I, I don't know why they didn't just cover this up slightly. Uh, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll just put like a a piece of blue um, tape over it or something like that to hide that. Really small. These pieces on the side for the hip skirts are gray, and I don't know why. They could have just molded it in this white, um, but they decided to do that in gray, which is weird. What else is there? And then the head sculpt. The head sculpt looks actually really nice, um, but the way the transformation requires it, there's a split here, and you can see that that is not so obvious but once you see it it's hard not to see it other people don't like the the color of the face i don't really mind it that much i think and and the sculpt itself i think it actually looks really good it's a little bit of a different take some people have been painting it i don't know that i'm gonna bother doing that i usually don't like to mod my figures like that um the one last small detail and you're not gonna be able to see this is that the at least on mine the antenna on each side are slightly different color than the molded blue on the helmet. It's so, so slight that I don't think most people would notice that, but I did, I don't know, because I've been messing with this guy a lot trying to get the transformation down. But um, by and large, I'm very happy with this figure and uh, just bottom line up front, I think he's my favorite MP Optimus Prime, or G1 Optimus Prime um, that's out right now. We'll see if he, uh, we'll take down the upcoming MP44, but for right now, uh, he stands at the top of my list. Surprisingly, he was the one I wasn't going to get. Alright, uh, he does have diecast pieces all over. I, I'm not going to go through all the places he has it, but he does have a lot of diecast that makes him feel very substantial. Really quick though, I'm not going to do a, um, a lot of comparisons. I want to get him out here with MP10, because I think that's going to be pretty quint a quintessential um, comparison and he is just slightly taller and again you can see it the more anime type styling that he has and the only really essential comparison I think is him with um, MP Megatron version 2 and I think this scale I think they designed him to be scaled with um, this Megatron because he is about head to head with him, which is again a great scale to have. And again, given that they're both more anime style or cartoon style, um, I think that scale works perfectly. I'm not going to compare him with Magic Square just because, again, I'm going to save that for later. Uh, let's get into some. Should we get into the accessories first? No, let's go into articulation. So his head is on a swivel and a swivel going all the way around. He's going to need that for transformation. The antenna, you can get him. Um, Rotated however you'd like. His shoulders, he does have ratchets going all the way around. Joint going out that far. He also has a butterfly joint. Um, you have to make use of it by pressing this little die cast button on the back and it releases this tab. You do also use this for transformation, but you can make use of that to get a bit of a butterfly joint if you want to get his arm. And it's it's pretty substantial. And when you push it back, you do have to press that to press that button again and slide that into the slot. But it locks in very securely. It does have a bicep swivel and elbow joint that goes pretty far. Uh, and, and he has another joint that goes to the side, which is really weird looking, but that's for transformation, so don't worry about that. His wrist is on a swivel. And his hands are very much like um, uh, MP... Megatron version 2.0s. It's not a direct KO of it, but essentially it's the same styling except one extra joint on the thumb. So the forefinger has a joint at the base of the hand and one ex extra one, and the rest of the three hands do as well. Uh, the three fingers do as well. So these three are all molded together, 
at the base and one additional joint. The thumb has a joint at the base and one additional joint here. So that's the one extra joint that you get. But it's a, it's a really nice set of hands, even though it's not fully articulated. I think this is uh, more than enough for what people are going to do, unless you're trying to do the middle finger, which I wouldn't show off anyway, since this is a child-friendly reviewer. Coming to the waist, he does have waist roll. Um, he, he doesn't seem to have 360 in this mode, and I think it's because of one of the leg joints. Um, but you're, you're not really going to need 360 for him. No ab crunch, that's the one thing he's really missing in comparison to Magic Square. Going to the lower section, he does have very tight hip skirts on the side. They'll let you go all the way out to the side like this. This is a friction joint. Ratcheted joints going that way. And you can go back fairly far before you hit his um, rear skirt. And you can't really get the rear skirt out of the way because it's actually attached to the side skirts. And if you unplug these, it just messes up the look. So really, you're kind of limited to how far back you can go. No thigh swivel. A lot of people have been complaining about that. I get it. I also wish he had it for sure. Um, I think it's a more natural swivel. But he does have a upper, well, I guess our knee swivel. So once you start going like this, um, it doesn't look that bad. But once you start bending the knee, you can start seeing why it looks kind of awkward. But it's not a, it's not a deal breaker for me. Coming down to the feet, he has ankle tilts. That's what this kind of metal pin um, indicates. You can see he has a pretty good range there. And then he has toe articulation. And this piece does move a little bit, but it's really just to help hide the gaps on his toe articulation. His knee bend goes pretty far. I think more than enough, for sure. Uh, I think that's it for articulation overall. Again, I think he's very expressive. He has a lot of great articulation. The ankle tilts help a lot. You can get dynamic running poses or jumping poses. You can create the iconic blaster pose if you want. You know, while we're talking about that, you can just open up his hands. Pretty uh, typical MP style hands with a tab on the gun that goes into a slot in the, on the palm. Holds it very securely. No worries there. And to get his hand ready for uh, transformation both for the Energon Axe. I'll show that off now. Open up the bottom panel of his arm. Um, you, to get it in, you have to be kind of specific. So let me start first with the three middle, uh, middle ring finger and so forth. That's probably the easiest way. You want to kind of collapse that as far thinly as you can. You want to make sure it's thin. And then fold the thumb down and then fold the pointer like this. Should be something like that, okay? Uh, very careful when you do this. Don't just swing it in because there is kind of some interference right here. Just twist the wrist just slightly. You can see mine's kind of marred up already because I didn't realize that at first. Just swing it in slightly, and then once you actually get it in, um, you can rotate it back into place. Close up the hand. And you'll see this kind of rounded, um, I don't know, peg, and then you'll go ahead and snap that on. And there you have him with his Energon Axe. Looks quite nice. It's kind of weird that this part detaches, so it's kind of hard to get it off sometimes. Um, but if you just wiggle it enough, you should be able to get it off. You can just stuff this back in. So those are all the accessories that we're going to really need to talk about for robot mode. Let's go ahead and get into transformation. And this is well, this is probably one of the things that a lot of people were worried about or, or disliked upon seeing some of the initial videos. Um, it is, I don't want to say complex, it's really well engineered, but there are some, you know, tolerant, not tolerances, but like clearance issues and ways that they don't explain that there's a more efficient way to transform this guy, let's just say. Um, than the way they do it, so, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it my way as usual I try to uh, Investigate the best way to get these guys transformed to help you guys out um, And I don't think what they show in the extract extractor manual is uh, even close to the best way And it leaves out a lot of really important details or tips. All right So first things first we're gonna come to, we're gonna start with the legs the instructions say start with the upper body start with the legs for sure uh, Go ahead and make sure the leg the ankles are straight 
We're gonna to come to the outside of each leg and the front panel will open up like that. The back panel will open up. You're gonna flip this all the way around, have it come all the way into the inner side of the, of the leg and tab in. From here, we're gonna untab this tank and these two tabs here, these like the gas tank, open that up. You're gonna flip the foot up, come down to the gas tank. You're gonna rotate it down like so. Rotate it around on itself and then flip it back up. And let me scooch this down. Um, this is where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, you're gonna want to, it's, it's a kind of a hook tab that's gonna hook into here. So it's already hooked in this way. Uh, you wanna push down towards the inside of the leg and that'll release the hook you can see here. So you're gonna flip it on this double hinge, come to the outside and hook it into the outside of the leg like so and it has a definitive kind of snap to it. Coming down to the ankle, uh, you wanna make sure that this ankle is completely rotated 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Uh, well, not ankle, but like this joint here, so that um, everything is squared off. Otherwise, you're gonna feel like you're, you can't close this correctly. You have to have everything squared off perfectly, like so, or else you're not gonna be able to close this. You're gonna tab it in here, Flip this down, and you have a small thin piece that is gonna open up and tab in there. The foot or ankle, you're gonna push downwards to lock it into place there. And we're almost done. We're gonna take care of one part of the thigh, uh, two parts of the thigh. So bend the knee, and you'll see this little white piece here. You wanna push down on that to create a gap. You're gonna push down on the front of the thigh, and then rotate it inwards towards the leg. Pull this piece all the way down. You'll see these two little nubs do not stop there. That's important. Go all the way down until it's completely covered. Fold this in, come to the side. This piece is a spring loader. You want to pull out and rotate it 180 degrees like so. You can straighten out the leg. So this is what the configuration should look like for leg mode. And we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to go more quickly because again, this is a fairly tra uh, complicated transformation. I want to get through it as soon as possible. But I also want to try to do one cut to make you make sure you guys know that it is possible to get this guy transformed without too much of a hassle. Once you get it down and you get the tips. Again, flipping this in, open up the leg, flip up the foot, come to the gas tank, and rotate it around. And again, the engineering here is really quite ingenious. Um, it, while it is a bit complex, nothing feels um, too crazy. Um, there's only a couple of suggestions I would have made to them, which um, really all takes place in the upper body. And um, it would have been simple fixes. So again, be careful down here. You wanna make sure that these are all rounded, uh, squared off. Close this up. Tab that in, tab that in, put the front panel in, and then close this with the front tab here. Push in the foot. Come to the knee, create that gap, pull down on the front of the thigh, rotate it inwards. There we go. Pull this section all the way down past these little two nubs, fold it into the inner thigh, and then working with this spring loaded section. Uh, rotate it around. It's much easier if you have nails. And there we go. Now we have the lower lower section uh, pretty much handled. Let's go with the upper section. Um, before we do anything else, I want to prepare a few things on the upper body so that we don't have to worry about them when everything is kind of exploded. Um, that's the, probably the best way to describe it. So let's go ahead and pull out on these smokestacks. They extend. Let's take care of the, the hands. As I said before, you want to make sure that they're kind of narrow. So work with the, the uh, three molded fingers together first, fold in the thumb, and then fold in the trigger, like so. All right, this is kind of how it's supposed to look like, like he's holding a gun there. Open up the panel. There's also this little corner piece that you're gonna to wanna to flip out. And once again, when you fold this in, rotate the hand just a little bit to avoid scratching the inside of your palm where the thumb is. Once you've cleared that section, you can go ahead and close that up, fold it in, you'll see it folds in just perfectly like so. So this is how you want it. So the ring uh, pointer finger is pointing outwards. 
and fold this out. Remember to keep this out. And then you can go ahead and rotate the forearm like that so that these screws are lined up with the um, smokestack. I think that's the best way, if I remember, remember correctly. And if it's not, we'll get to it. Fold that up, like so. All right, the last thing we'll do um, to get everything prepared is work with the head. And as I said before, the crest kind of splits in half and it folds forward. Um, I'm concerned about this over the long run if you transform a lot, just because this piece does come in contact with the face mask and you know, messing up your face or marking it up would be a real bummer. So just be careful when you do that. And then this little piece back here is on a hinge, you can fold that in. All right. Um, we'll rotate that 180 degrees and then let's start the rest of the transformation. Uh, all right, the first thing I want, I'd like to do is actually deal with the hip skirts. So I think um, pulling up on this, there's two tabs that connect to the crotch as well as two tabs that connect to the side skirts. Just pull up on that just a little bit and that will release. You don't have to do really much, much of anything there. You do want to then come to the side, and there's two pretty hefty pegs. There we go, like that. They're plugged in there. Pull that out on each side, and then straighten out what is obviously the bumper here. Okay? Same thing as in the front, these two tabs, there's a similar set of two tabs in the back. Let's go ahead and pull it out on that. And they're both on a, another set of hinges. These kind of lock into place. Um, we're gonna have to move these out of the way in just a bit. But the reason why I do it this way instead of the upper body first um, is because moving this out of the way will give you access to the kind of obliques here that will make removing the backpack, this whole back piece, way easier. Um, everyone seems to struggle with this at least from the ones I've seen. Uh, what you wanna do, at least my tip, is to pull kind of diagonal out like that. You see that just unclipped everything. You wanna make sure that, just to show you more clearly, you wanna open this up and release these tabs and release this tab specifically in here. It's hard to see, but it's in there. But doing this, removing the, the bumper, makes it way easier. So again, just pull diagonally back and out, and that should release everything. So once you have that, you can still come behind the bumper and pull up on that backpack from the bottom. Uh, the reason being, just because you release these tabs doesn't mean everything is done. There's actually a pretty hefty tab here that goes into the back, or, or kind of the spine. So with that out of the way, that's one of the major challenges people seem to face from, from, from get-go. So let's bring this up and around 180 degrees. And from here, we're gonna work with this part real quick. So that big chunky square tab, again, I don't really know why they made it gray, they should have made it red. Uh, but go ahead and pull this in, pull this up, this panel up just a little bit, and you can bring out this panel around. You're gonna fold this open like that. And you can see this locks into place. Same thing on this side, folding this out and open. And once you have these out, this panel folds closed, and uh, you're basically all set. All right. Now, coming back to the midsection, I'm going to actually fold this down just a little bit so you guys can see on camera a little bit easier. So now we're going to come back here. Uh, the next step we're going to do is open up the chest, actually, because that's going to be really, really important. You need to have that open. And then from the back again, this is where you can see most of the action going. That's why I'm showing you from the back. You're going to want to, again, make sure that this tab is released on both sides. And you're going to want to rotate up at this hinge here. And keep it like this for now. You're going to pull down this section, which is kind of flipped, side, flipped inside out version of the grill, the other grill. So you have a faux grill. Um, for robot mode. And then you have to reach in here. You might see this little tab. I don't know if you can see it easily. Right here, you wanna pull out on this. And that's gonna release this entire die cast spine that um, allows everything to extend up here. All right, so fold that faux grill down. 
I'm going to rotate 180 degrees on that. And while you're here, remember I said that these um, skirt sections kind of slot in here to these little little indents. Lift these up and then you want to rotate these hip skirts 180 degrees as well. To do that, you pull down on the legs. You can see these are on a little slider. You want to do that. That's what limits, I think, maybe the, um, the waist rotation, but I'm not really sure. And then you can push these back up for now. And kind of lock into place. And you can even push these pieces back down into that groove so that you don't have too many um, wobbly pieces around. Because again, there's going to be a lot of pieces that like this that kind of flop around and get in the way. You want to minimize that as much as possible to, to ease your frustration. All right, from here, we're going to flip up these gray pieces, flip up the entire grill along with these side pieces, and then flip these in into the center, like so. All right, so um, next up, let's actually get this piece through. Another critical section here is that there's two little tabs here that are very difficult to kind of clear. Um, there are a couple of ways to do it, but I think the easiest way is to get the antenna folded all the way back first, and then you can rotate in and then you won't have any clearance issues. But once you rotate in, make sure to rotate these back all the way forward. Th this is the way I do it. I advise you to do it that way but if you find a better way go ahead and um, do that but i've experimented a lot i feel like that's the easiest way without marring any part of the precious head sculpt all right so that's all situated uh, next what we're going to do is remember those little buttons that we use for the um the, sh the shoulder butterfly joint right here i'm going to press that and release this section and this is on a swivel that's going to come all the way around and what you want to do is get the arms cleared, but you want this piece, that thin backpack piece, to go in between the smokestack and the forearms, like that. Okay, and I rotated this the wrong way. Now you'll see that this part is out like that. But you want to rotate this down while rotating the shoulder up. And you'll see this is flush, and this um, screw shoulder piece is out. And let me scooch this down a bit. And this piece is hanging out in between. This will make your life a lot um, easier, a lot uh, the transformation a lot easier later. Okay, so this may seem kind of weird, but same thing on this side. Press that button to release the butterfly joint. Rotate this around. You could get the arm like this, and while you make this flush, you want to have this arm basically folding straight back, so that these pieces are like this. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. And I'm being very meticulous for a specific reason. Again, this transformation can be very frustrating. Um, if you don't have certain tolerances and clearances exactly right, you're not going to get a perfect alt mode. All right, from here, we're basically going to finish off um, the rest of the cab. This piece that's on a slider, um, you want to keep this gray piece fit all the way forward but you want to have this red piece slot slid back and fold it in on itself. The reason is you need to have this forward is for this clearance right here. This will play a crucial role. This should sit basically flush. Um, if you have this misaligned and this is sitting forward, you're going to have gaps in your alt mode. Alt mode. So make sure this gray piece is all the way forward and this red piece is sitting on the outside like that. Uh, from here, what we're going to do is rotate down on this the cab piece and then while you're doing that simultaneously rotate the shoulder on that ratchet joint it sounds complicated it's really not so there we go and then you can close up the chest if you'd like so we'll do the same thing on this side again making sure that this gray piece is faced all the way forward and this red piece is backwards and folded in over it you want to make sure this folds in and this red this piece on the shoulder joint will sit flush on against here when you're closing this down, remember to rotate simultaneously keep the shoulder in this upper position. All right, close the chest up, and we're almost there, I swear. So from here, you've gotten past most of the hard parts. 
The last part is kind of an interesting part. Uh, let me first go back to this hip skirt. You can see this hip skirt kind of on an L joint. Make sure that L joint's all the way down into that weird slot or groove. You're gonna want to get the legs 90 degrees. The ratchets really help. If it was a friction joint, this would be a lot more frustrating. So we're gonna take these one at a time. You wanna make sure that the these extending pieces, these sliding joints are all the way up here this leg joint is all the way down and you're going to rotate at that joint not this bottom joint this top joint you're going to want to rotate all the way around clearing the hip skirt and then making sure that this goes underneath the gray portion here if you did everything right that hip skirt will sit on just the bottom side of there and it'll be all set same thing on the other side remember to Extend that joint, rotate at the upper joint while you're going all the way up and around, and get underneath that gray piece. You can then tab the two legs, two halves of the legs, or two legs together, like so. All right, so let's pause here. Make sure that this is all kind of lined up. This should be kind of horizontal. Uh, and 90 degrees to this piece on both sides, okay? Should be kind of like this. Um, if you did it wrong, it might be like tilted like this. Make sure it's like this, like 90 degrees, okay? All right, so now we're gonna fold this arm kind of at the elbow, the, the faux elbow, the weird elbow that's on the side, all right? And you'll, you can see this is very optimist-ish. Oh, see, so this piece slid forward. You can see that, that great piece I was telling you about. Um, let's go ahead and correct that real quick. This, it's actually good that that happened because I want to show you. Um, if, I, if I don't fix this now, it's going to be a, a major problem. All right, let's fix that. It's so very easy, just open that back up. And that's that's the thing. I was, I was gonna say that um, the major issue with this is that if they made these pins that hold these uh, floppy ad pieces tighter, that way you can um, put them into place and make sure they are sticking into place when you're transforming instead of having to worry about them flopping around, that would solve a lot of the issues that, that a lot of people are having. So let's fold this down, come back here. You're gonna wanna fold this whole section. So you're gonna fold the shoulders down as well as this backpack piece. And if you can, you can actually peg these in um, like so. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just again, fold them down simultaneously. Folding these pieces right now will kind of help. Fold these down and into place. You're gonna get the arms in in a very classic Optimus Prime way. Close up this piece and then fold this piece down. You'll see there's a tab here that goes into the back of the wheel well, of the front wheel well. Just hold that into place for now. Uh, don't worry about it so much. But again, these pegs should be nice and flush in. If you had a problem with, with there being a gap on here or here, it's because that gray piece was not pushed all the way forward that I just corrected. So come back over here, fold this in. Fold this close, as I mentioned before. This tab will come into the back of the wheel well, like so. Sorry. Like so. Um, since we're already back here, you can go ahead and correct this. So once you pull this out, you want to rotate it 90 degrees so it sits a little bit further towards the outside of the cab. Um, a really small detail, but a nice one nonetheless. And last, thing we're going to deal with this. Um, so this piece is kind of another, not really frustrating part, but it's more of like a clearance issue. And there are a couple ways to get around it, but um, what they what they show is basically to fold at the white piece, not at the silver piece we use for the hip skirts. Fold at the white piece, come down like this. I'm going to rotate on this front hinge, but you can see there's some already some clearance issues here, right? And they basically just say to kind of like jam it in, like push it up like this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm 
a little wary of actually recommending this because it might be even more frustrating. But if you can get this piece, uh, this this piece with the, the the peg in there, I find it a lot easier if you have this piece like kind of rotated 90 degrees as opposed to flat. Um, I'm probably not gonna be able to show it off because I should have done it before to show it. But if it was like if it was like um, positioned like this and you could rotate it in, it'd be a little bit easier. Here, let me see if I can do it. Okay. So like that, fold it in like this. All right, so once you get it like this, fold it back like so. This makes things a lot easier. So fold it in like that. And then when you come down, you'll see that it will come into the gap a little bit easier. And then you can just push up and in. And then these tabs will tab in here and here. So I think that's much better than the way that they show you in the instructions. It makes it a lot, much less like you're forcing something to clear. Um, that's my recommendation. You can take it or, or do it the way they say in the instructions. I'm just advising on the way I've found the most reliability in transforming, transforming in. You can rotate up these little windshield wipers, fold out the side mirrors, and you're basically done. Um, the only thing that you need to add is that little additional piece here. And again, these, there are two slots here. This is specifically so that it can work with the MP10 trailer. And here we have uh, op leader or op leader in his alt mode and it's really nice I mean, again very cartoony um, I do think it's kind of weird that they painted this silver I would think for a cartoon they would have made this red um, but whatever it is they do have nice rubber wheels again these I think this might be die cast or maybe not I'm not sure maybe it's not but it, it looks quite nice Overall, the 360 view. Oh, this piece, again, I don't know why they made it gray. If they made it red, it would have blended in a little bit more. You can't really do anything with it except kind of stick it down like that, which is kind of odd, but whatever. But overall, it looks really, really nice. Rolls quite well. And like I said, you can bring in your MP10 trailer, and you'll see these two um, thin tabs that will tab in to that little attachment. And you can make use of that, and you can actually clear turns without issue. All right, um, so I'm not going to do a comparison of alt mode. I'm going to do that in the detailed comparison um, in a in a, a later video. But I did want to show this off. As far as scale, real quick, you can see he's about the same size as MP10 uh, and the Magic Square. They're all roughly the same size in scale and alt mode. Which again is pretty amazing because they are quite different in terms of engineering and you usually lose something in engineering um, or make compromises so that they, the fact that they all kind of scale relatively well is pretty impressive. Yeah, so I know that transformation seemed really difficult, but again, if you follow those tips and tricks and those specific points that I pointed out, the specific areas where you need to be concerned, I think you'll have a much easier time and much more enjoyable time with this figure. Um, it took me very, very many transformations to get there, but now I can get through uh, pretty easily and without frustration. Speaking of frustration, or lack thereof, let's go back into robot mode, because I know, again, that this guy is a little bit more complicated, and there are even other tips that I can give you to get him back into robot mode. So we're going to start backwards, pretty much. Um, first thing we'll do is release these tabs up front, pull these down. Again, I think this is a little bit easier if you could go like this. Um, we're going to come to the sides here and release these tabs. Flip this up. Come to the side, flip it up. We're going to reach in here and pull out the forearms. Oh, sorry. Um, let's make sure to go ahead and create these clearances with the smokestacks. Fold in those side view mirrors. Just fold these out just like this. And as we did before, 
sorry about that. I had to take a quick break because I was running out of space on my camera and gave me a warning. So um, let's go ahead and rotate this entire backpack piece with the shoulders all the way up. And again, this will make your life way easier if you do it this way than trying to take it all um, one piece at a time. Now we're going to deal with those leg pieces that rotate all the way around. So just pull out on the legs, rotating it around those hip skirts, being careful of the clearance. Do that on both sides. We're going to straighten out the legs. Um, while we're here, go ahead and lift up on these little tabs or bars so that we can rotate the waist hip skirt pieces all the way around. And again, we're doing this because it will make life a lot easier. Go ahead and collapse them on this joint. And we're going to go ahead and tab in these pieces. So let's tab in the back first, specifically the back first. Peg in these two side pieces. When you rotate these in, you're going to rotate at this slight silver piece here. So a little bit of the silver is going to go on the side. Peg that in. Same thing on the other side. Peg that in. And then pegging in these two tabs and these two tabs here on the front will secure the lower body. And since we're already at the lower body, we're going to finish off the lower body transformation. Let's go ahead and start off with the um, lower leg. We'll rotate this piece up. You might have to get the hip skirt out of the way. We're going to push up on this front thigh piece and make sure it's all the way up and kind of flush with the other piece of the thigh. Straighten out the leg. On the bottom here, push the ankle out. Untab here. Flip this open. We're going to uh, untab at the gas tank and again straighten everything out. The gas tank will rotate around and go on the other side. The feet or the foot and toe will come out like so. The inside panel which will become the back we'll flip that out and straighten that out and then we're going to deal with um, these hooks again. So again pushing towards the inside of the leg Pull out on that double hinge, lock it back in like so, get it hooked in first and then push up. There we go. Rotate the panel here all the way up. Make sure this is completely collapsed. Tab that in. Tab in the front panel. Tab in the back panel. There we go. Pretty easy now. Again, the lower legs are, are really quite easy. Quite ingenious as well. Flip that in. I'm making sure the, the ankle is pushed out. Untab the gas tank. Open that all the way up. Flip the toe down. Get the gas tank rotated around. Inner panel. Come out. Straighten that out. There we go. And then we're going to deal with these hooks again towards the inside, rotate it in, hook it back in, get the foot all the way back around, tab in the gas, gas tank to the knee, fold up the front, fold up the back, deal with these thigh pieces, rotate the outer thigh up and around so it tabs in. That's spring-loaded, but you can give it a little bit of extra help with a push. Push up the thigh, clear this white piece and get it all the way up or you can just straighten out the leg and it should basically auto transform up for you. There we go, lower body transformation complete. Alright, let's come to the back here. Uh, I'm just going to rotate the legs just a little bit again so you guys can see what's going on. So extend the backpack. First thing we're going to do is actually get um, the chest open. Oops, sorry. Um, so be careful with these. Rotate these down. Get the chest open. These pieces are thin. They're, they're pretty sturdy for thin plastic, but just make sure to rotate these down uh, So before you open up the chest, obviously, because you can damage that. 
Going backwards from what we did before, we're going to open up. At the same time, keep these shoulders in place so they rotate, right? They rotate just a bit. Same thing on this side. Hold the shoulder in place while rotating up the side of the cab. Coming to the inside, these pieces were centered. You're going to want to spread these out, flip the grill down, and then flip these gray pieces around. Rotate the grill sections so they swap places like so. At this point, you can actually start clearing out this, this piece. Uh, be careful again with the head just against these tabs. But again, because of the way it was positioned, um, when you rotate it, would transform it out this way, you shouldn't have as many clearance issues. It should be smooth sailing. Rotate this around. And since we're already up here, let's go ahead and deal with this. Pull up on that panel, rotate this down, and fold these panels in. You're gonna rotate this in like so. Same thing on this side. Fold this down and against it, and then pull up on this gray piece to kind of hold that panel down. And again, that's going to tap into the spine anyway, so we need it in that position. Coming back to the abdomen or grill area, flip this up all the way, and fold in the sides. All right. That's going to go all the way up into the back. Now we're going to deal with these um, butterfly butterfly joints. So we're going to keep the shoulders in this kind of position. We just want to close this up like so, and then press that depress that button, that spring loaded button, to get the shoulders in place, like that. So. Same thing on this side. So we want to basically close this up, depress the button. There we go. And now we're pretty close to the finish line. All we need to do now is rotate the sides of the cab back in, which will be the sides of Optimus's body. Rotate that down like so. I want to show you here. Again, you want to make sure that these are back so that you'll be able to tab these in, in a bit. You can close up the chest. Same thing on this side. I'm going to come down, clear these tabs, come on, clear the tab, there we go, close up the chest, you can lock everything down, like so. Alright, we're going to deal with that kind of troublesome backpack, bring this all the way down, you'll see these tabs hold this into place, flip up. Flip back the backpack. A couple things to be aware of. There's tabs on either side that need to go inside of the shoulders. And then when you tab this in, remember you're spreading these side oblique pieces and you have to get this gray tab in first. So push that in, like so. Come on, there we go. Of course I'm gonna have trouble with one side of one tab. There we go. Make sure that's cleared. These red pieces don't go on the outside, they do have to go on the inside, so push them in. From there, close up these tabs, these gray pieces from the backpack and from the side, so to minimize any gaps. Get the arms down and transform the arms. So these uh, smoke stacks can just collapse in. Open up the fist. Again, when, when you open up the fist, do not just go straight. Remember to rotate it ever so slightly so that you don't scratch up and mar your blue plastic. Close up the panel, close up this little triangle, 
and then rotate the forearm, uh, the bicep, so that the fists are facing the correct direction. Same thing on this side. Pull this out, rotate this around, close it up, rotate the arm around. Um, if these open, go ahead and just swing up the arms slightly, to close the, the mirrors, and then lastly the head. Rotate it around to the front, pull back this little back piece, flip this up, and get the, the back side in first, close it down, make that flush, and then adjust the antennas as you see fit. And with that very long and very detailed explanation of how to transform this guy, we are back in robot mode. So final thoughts, I said up front that this is probably my favorite um, G1 Optimus. It's not without his flaws, it's not perfect, and I already hear that they might be doing a second release already even though this guy just came out in the last week or so um maybe with the new face sculpt because that's one of the major things people have been complaining about um it'd be great if again they had chrome here if they got rid of these gray pieces um and that gray tab that could just be red to, to blend in a little bit more in alt mode um, but by and large this guy's really enjoyable um there's there's probably not much else i can say that i'm not going to say in the uh, comparison review but when I get a chance to do that in the next week or so but by and large I think he is currently the best Optimus out there for you um, masterpiece collectors especially if you're a fan of the animation model uh, if you're not maybe um, you know you can still stick with mp10 I still really enjoy that and some of you really like magic square and I frankly the aesthetic and proportions of the magic square are the ones I was leaning towards the most uh, but as an overall figure, um, in in terms of um, quality and what I think you're getting um, overall as an enjoyment, I think this guy is my favorite so far. And again, I'll go into more details when I do a detailed comparison, uh, probably over the next week or so. All right. So if this helped you at all, and I'm sure that if you guys have this figure, I'm sure something in this review helped you. Just smash that like button. It really does keep me motivated to go ahead and do more reviews. Um, I will be back with more live streams. Um, if you thought I deserve it, please go ahead and uh, give me your subscription. I always appreciate that. Big thanks to my subscriber, Toy Dojo, as always, and to all you guys for watching. I appreciate you going through this very long and detailed transformation and review of uh, trans Transform Elements TE01 uh, Op Leader. All right, that's all for today, everyone. Hope you have a good one.